As we honor. As we honor the honoree on today, thank you all so much. Thank you. All right. So we're here to honor former council member Priscilla R. Tyson. And you know what? I'm going to say now the honoree doesn't have a seat, so I know someone is going to honor her with a seat because we cannot all take the seats and she not have somewhere to sit. So don't worry, we're going we're gonna to bless you today. <laughs> we're going to make sure you have a seat. Thank you so much. And there are some family members of hers that are standing. Um, I think it's only, only, only right that we allow them to sit. So I will ask you to just keep that in mind. Our council members, Thank you all so much, President Harden and the rest of the council members. Thank you all so much. Those family members, if you all will come forward. Um, I know a couple of them by name because they work in recreation. So y'all come on up down front. <laughs> council member Tyson, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm going to let her sit down. I'm going to let her take this seat and, and or sit right here. And we've got some people to come all the way down front. Thank you all so much. There's one seat right here. There's also one seat right here. All right, we're going to get some more chairs over because we've got a lot of people here, which is good. It's always good to honor someone and, and show our appreciation for them while they are here. So let's give a hand up to Council Member Priscilla R. Tyson. Thank you all so much pulling this all together, making sure her family is seated and honored the right way. We appreciate it. As this day, we, we are here. We're not going to hold you because it is a little chilly. Um, I'm from South, and so you know me coming back to this Midwest area, it's a little cold, but we're going to make this happen and really um, in respect and grateful that we honor you on today. All right, I know we have a lot of special guests here, and uh, we will make sure that we recognize you, but at this time, I would like to bring forward Pastor Kelly as he will bring forth a faithful memorandum and prayer on today. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Please allow me um, just the opportunity on behalf of Bishop Timothy Joseph Clark and the First Church of God family to tell you how proud we are and how much we love Council Member Priscilla R. Tyson. She is Deacon Tyson when she gets to First Church, and so we are godly proud of her in all of the aspects. Would you join with me um, as we go before the Lord in prayer and pray for both our honoree and for this honor and occasion? Let's bow our heads. Father, we come before you in light of this monumental moment for one of your dear daughters. We do not take this lightly and we are not frivolous in our approach to you. We come before you as you have ordained. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, you have been and continue to be good. And for all that you have done and continue to do, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for Priscilla Tyson. We thank you for her life. We thank you for her living. And we thank you for her labor. Thank you for lending her to us. We pray that you would continue to bless what she places her hands to do. Bless everything that she touches. We pray, God, that you would supply her every need according to your riches and glory. And that you would make ways and open doors for her. That you would bless her from the crown of her head even to the soles of her feet. Father, we thank you for her passion for people. We thank you for her political persistence, and we thank you for her, her professional perseverance. We bless you. 
that she stands as a model of dedication and a model of determination. Your word says not to be weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll reap if we do not give up. And so we thank you for her diligence. We rejoice with her in her season of reaping. Father, we pray for this building that will bear her name. Father, let it be a testament and a testimony of your goodness and your grace. Let it serve this community and let the service reverberate throughout this city, throughout this state, throughout this country. Yes, Lord, even this world. Let it be a declaration of what you do with ordinary people who entrust their lives and entrust their destinies to you. Father, let this building impact, let it influence and let it inspire generations to come and cause them to serve others with care and compassion. Let it be a representation of the woman whose name it bears. Father, we ask these things in the precious name of the King of King and Lord of Lords, Jesus the Christ. And because we believe that the petitions we ask of you will come to pass, we close this prayer as we have begun it, just by saying thank you. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Kelly, for such gracious words. I would like to honor, um, as we're going to do this, just a little bit different. Um, we're going to ask, call on uh, our county officials. If you will just stand at this time. There's so many names, but I'm just going to ask that you stand. Thank you so much. Um, if, you're not, if you're standing, if you could just wave your hand. And then we're going to ask that our city officials outside of our uh, city council members, you'll get your own special recognition, but our city officials and staff, if you would raise your hand or take a stand, we appreciate you at this time. Thank you all so much. And then our current city council members or our former city council members, if you will wave your hand or stand. We appreciate you if you would do that at this time. Thank you so much. There's so many. You look around, we've got a few of them. I don't want to start calling names because I'll forget somebody or don't know their name and mess up. So we just going to ask you to wave your hand. And then family members, if you will do the same, if you'll please, please just wave your hand. We won't ask you to stand. Just wave your hands. Just wave your hands. And I did that because I wanted everyone to see the love that's here for Council Member Tyson on today. We're here today to honor her, the lifelong commitment to the arts. The arts are critical to a high quality of life. Arts are accessible to everyone, whether you enjoy performing arts, visual arts, as a spectator or a participant. That's why the arts our core to our mission, which is to connect the people of community through the power of nature, wellness, and creativity. We are excited to recognize and honor former member Priscilla R. Tyson for her lifelong commitment, her lifelong commitment to the arts, not just to service, but to arts. Without the support of leaders such as yourself, we wouldn't have a vibrant community offering creative pursuits for all residents, so we thank you. Her long history of arts, boy, I tell you, I had to take some and cut some out and put more in, and, but it's some years of service in arts, both in her role as city council, personal pursuits to include local artists, and you'll see some of that over in the center but also in her gallery, Star Arts Gallery. And serving as a member of the Greater Columbus Arts for many years, more than 15 years of leadership and service to the Greater Columbus Arts, we say thank you. Thank you for all you've done for the department, the city, and the arts. Our department has benefited from your support. And you've led the groundwork for this support. And we continue to say thank you as we move it into the future. I am honored 
we are able to play a role in honoring your legacy. And at this time, I'd like to present our mayor for the city of Columbus, Mayor Andrew J. Ginther. Good morning. It is a great morning here in the city of Columbus as we gather to honor and celebrate an incredible neighbor, an incredible public servant, someone who has given so much to this city. So as we recognize her, I must first pause and recognize and celebrate the Tyson family to Rennie and to all the kids and grandkids and extended family. Because individuals don't just serve, families serve right next to them. So thank you for sharing Priscilla with all of us and sharing her with the great people of Columbus. So Council Member Tyson and I weren't just classmates coming in the same year on city council we were actually sworn into city council the very same night and we have been inseparable ever since an incredible partner an incredible leader someone that we're so grateful for after facing a global pandemic and so many other issues in the last few years i thank god that council member tyson chaired health and human services for so long during her tenure on council, better preparing Columbus Public Health and helping us identify an incredible leader in Dr. Mashika Roberts to help lead us through one of the most challenging and difficult times in our city's history. Council Member Tyson helped prepare us for times like those. She's been an incredible advocate for the arts, incredible advocate for people. Whatever she was working on, it always came down to people. How can we help people? How can we care for people? How can we position them for success? It didn't matter if it was a traffic light, a sidewalk, or public art. It was always about people. And so uh, it gives us great honor today as we celebrate former council member Tyson and all that she's done by renaming the Cultural Arts Center to reflect her and her remarkable legacy. While this recognition doesn't come close to embodying the breadth and depth of her accomplishments, incredible contributions, still making them today with children and families. It's fitting that such an important building now carries Council Member Tyson's name. Just a couple of quick points. Cultural Arts Center is a, new, a unique gem in our city. It's over 150 years old with roots in an original structure back, dating back to 1814. And it served many purposes and even played a role in the Civil War. In fact, it was added to the National Register of Historical Places in 1974. Thanks to a grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce, it opened in its current form in 1978 and quickly became a hub for the arts and artists of all mediums. It features a ceramic studio in the basement with painting and weaving labs on the upper floors. It offers community arts classes at every level. I mean, what says better than Priscilla Tyson than community arts classes at every level? that are in high demand and not commonly found in other areas of Columbus. It's a wonderful place for people to mark the special moments in their lives, including this ceremony commemorating a remarkable and selfless public servant, a Titan in her community, a daughter of Columbus. Gives me so much pride today, not just as a friend and colleague, but in my role as the mayor of the city of Columbus to name our cultural arts center after an incredible advocate for people in our community. It's now my honor to introduce another great friend and partner in all of our work to move our city forward. Please welcome Council President Shannon Harden.
I know this was already done, but I know Councilmember Tyson would want us to do is do this. If you served with Councilmember Tyson on council, including the mayor, would you just stand and get full recognition for the person that you got to serve with, that we got to lead the city together with? I see Councilmember Mitch Brown here. And most of my colleagues uh, from our Charlita Tavares is here who served a mentor to all of us. And many of my colleagues on council now, uh, Emmanuel Remy, uh, President Pro Tem Liz Brown, Rob Dorns, all have the honor of being a part of this historic moment in our city's history, serving with Priscilla Tyson, when I was just standing there, um, and this is how God works, something came to my mind, the song, Somebody Prayed For Me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. That is the story of Priscilla Tyson. And it's not me. It should be substituted for us. We are a better city. We are, we were blessed with her leadership, not just on the civic side, but because she cared and because you prayed for us. We are grateful. I often say that the things that we build, the bricks and mortar, the monuments that we adorn with names and um, with words are physical manifestations of our values. And like the mayor said, and like Director Reese said, so it is very fitting that we pause on this brisk, brisk Friday, and this brisk, brisk Friday, <laughs> to adorn the Cultural Arts Center, as now the Priscilla R. Tyson Cultural Arts Center in the city of Columbus. Let's recognize that. As Mayor Ginther said, this site has a, uh, uh, has a storied history. It was originally a penitentiary, then torn down to build an arsenal. It's a building constructed by slave labor, eventually transformed into an art center with the help of the federal government. Columbus took a building with a dark history and made it a space where folks could find hope and inspiration. That's often the role that Councilmember Tyson has played in our city helping us grapple with our city and our nation's history of racism and sexism. Whether it was through the Crown Act or the Commission on Black Girls, Councilmember Tyson found ways to, to right the wrongs that have plagued our country. Councilmember Tyson fought for the history of Poindexter Village, ensuring that those stories and that legacy would be preserved. Councilmember Tyson is the longest serving African American woman in Columbus City Council history. In our city's history. Aside from the momentous policy impact that Councilmember Tyson has made over the years, her presence on council has changed the course of our city. It helped folks see themselves as a part of the legislative process. During her time on council, Priscilla Tyson was about the business of changing lives for black and brown people in our community. She started by changing her own life as the first person in her family to get a college degree, a role model for younger sisters to follow. She continued to inspire when she founded City Year Columbus. Council members Tyson's legacy is one of impact, one based on strength, on vision, God certainly has blessed our community with Councilmember Tyson through her service. During some of the hardest times on council, it was Councilmember Tyson who helped steady our hand, who provided the advice that we needed to hear, not only consider her service a blessing to the community, but certainly a blessing for me and my colleagues. It is now my honor to uh, bring to the, to the podium President Pro Tem Elizabeth Brown, who chairs the Recreation and Parks Department. Thank you so much, uh, Council President. And I just want everyone, first of all, you all look amazing. I do hope, 
Uh, could you could you stand up, council member, and just like look around at everything we're looking at right now, and just everyone who's here for you? Um, it's an incredible group of people. And you even brought the sun out because <laughs> while President Harden was speaking, he said, uh, and when everyone applauded um, for the longest serving African American woman council member, when he said that line, the applause brought the sun out. So it's pretty incredible. Um, I'm really honored uh, to be here to, to honor you today, to honor former council member Priscilla Tyson and her commitment to the arts and, and to our city. Um, but beyond that commitment, and it is the reason we're here because of what is being named in her honor, but we're really here to honor her as an individual. The first time that I met Council Member Tyson, hadn't run for anything yet, I walked in with my little suit jacket, and uh, to have a conversation with her, and we didn't talk about politics, we didn't talk about City Hall, we talked about service because that is always top of mind for Council Member Tyson. We happen to share a connection through City Year, um, and, I, and that was our basis, but um, she was always interested, is always interested in talking about service first. And that really informs, I believe, her commitment to the arts. As Director Reese shared, the arts are critical to improving our quality of life. As a mother myself and as chair of the Recreation and Parks Committee, I see firsthand how the high quality, low cost programming offered by Columbus Rec and Parks brings joy to our community. Our city makes arts accessible to all, including summer camps and low cost and free programming, free performances by the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, ballet met, and world renowned musical artists. By offering these programs across our city, we are able to bring the arts to residents of all ages. And in addition to improving quality of life, the arts actually serve a practical purpose in our community. They generate $412 million in local economic activity every year, including $190 million in event-related spending by patrons and nearly 15,000 jobs. Now, no one knows those statistics better than Council Member Tyson. Her passion for the arts and her love for this city were an important combination for Council because ultimately, the arts are about people. And people and service, as I have said, those are Council Member Tyson's passions. During her 15 years on City Council, she provided funding for public art established the first funding for the Columbus Arts Commission, and helped revise the funding formula for the arts. These just scratch the surface of Councilmember Tyson's accomplishments and contributions to the arts in our community. It could not be more fitting to immemorialize those contributions by putting them on the name of a building. So Councilmember Tyson, thank you for all you have done for our city, and for the arts, and for our people. I'm honored to be a part of honoring your legacy, and I would like to invite you to the podium now. I have to zip up because, um, <laughs> it, you know, I, I have a suit on and I, if some, you'll see it over here, but I definitely don't want to, you know, I know they're taking pictures and, you know, we got to always try to look good. So I got to just kind of, you know, I got to get it together before we, um, before I start to speak. So we got to try to represent here. So I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I just, first of all, I, I just want to say, well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and uh, I just want to thank God for his faithfulness to me. <sighs> you know, new mercies I see every single day, and I'm just so thankful, and I just want to ask you, is anyone else blessed this morning? Amen. Thank you. I am humbled to receive this honor, and every time I really think about it, you know, I almost think about why me? But because I also trust God, I know that 
He will abundantly bless you. And this is, this is abundance. This honor is also for each of you who have poured into me, who have stood with me, supported me, and allowed me to serve this community. To our mayor, I thank you for honoring my service in such a visible way. Oftentimes, our work is remembered when we have departed this life. However, Mayor, you chose to honor me in the presence of my family and the community that I love. And for that, I am just truly, truly grateful. So thank you. I want to thank Director Reese, because when I think about the Columbus Recreation Parks Department, I think about how things have come full circle. I was a Rex and Parks kid. You know, we didn't have a full recreation center built in our neighborhood, but what we had was a Recreation and Parks Department at Shepherd Elementary School. And I had the fortune of being like a summer youth leader on the Shepherd Playground. I also had the chance to be a part of all the arts and crafts that were taught by the amazing Amina Robinson, who was a part of this department. I also spent time at Brittnell Recreation Center as a young person and as an adult, I lived close by and would take my son over to that recreation center. But as a teenager, I also spent time. They had dances and events. So I am a Rexham Parks child. I also was blessed, I think about full circle, with the opportunity to serve as the chair of the Rexham Parks Committee on City Council. That's one of the first committees that a new member generally will chair. I absolutely loved it. It's one of those committees because it's the closest to the people in many ways. And you're not able to, um, you hate to even give that committee up because it touches the lives of so many people. Uh, and so I'm thankful to have served that. I also, and I haven't been in the building yet, I can't wait to go, but I will say that the Cultural Arts Center has also been very near and dear to me. It is a place where I know that aspiring and professional artists can come and develop and showcase their skills. But it's also a place where, when I was the president of the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials, we had receptions in that building. I also had the opportunity as part of Columbus Sister Cities International, our relationship with the city of Genoa, and we have the Thousand Faces of Genoa exhibition in that building. And being a part of the Greater Columbus Arts Council, there are many events we have held there, especially during the, the Columbus Arts Festival. So the arts, the building, are near and dear to me. I wanna thank Pastor Kelly, who thank you for that prayer, Pastor Kelly, and thank you for your presence in being here. We are hosting the Berean Conference at our church, and Pastor Kelly is responsible for making sure that everything is moving in the right direction. So for him to be here, thank you, Pastor Kelly. <laughs> to my colleagues on council, and first to President Harden, thank you for being here. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for being a partner and helping me to help you to be able to move our city forward. So I thank you for your friendship. I thank you for how you continue to lead this city. To President Pro Tem Brown, thank you for your remarks. Thank you for leading this amazing committee. I'm so happy that the building that will now have my name will be able to be under your leadership and guidance and will certainly be coming to you guys for funding to make sure everything <laughs> that that building, because you know what your name is on a building, you wanna make sure that you have resources. So Director Reese, so there's some added benefits to having, the, having my name on that building because we're gonna make sure that it's gonna be representative as, as to who we are. So. 
thank you. And I see our, our amazing director of finance, Kathy Owens, who I thank you for helping to move this forward. So I thank you, Kathy. So we'll be coming to that team to say, you know, let's make sure, let's make sure it is representative of what this means today. We won't forget about it. Um, my members on council, because you have to approve all of that, thank you. So thank you in advance, but also it was, has been an honor and a privilege to serve with each of you. I've served with, with Councilman Brown, Emmanuel Remy, and, and, and Rob Dorns, and so, and I also, my special relationship with our uh, council member, Lourdes Padilla Barroso, based from our city year day. She was one of my very first core members in city year, and now she is here on Columbus City Council. What a blessing. I also want to thank my Alvis family that is here. And so thank you, Denise and Linda and Ramona for showing up, as well as Julie on my team and Janet, thank you for being here. I want to have a special thank you to the arts community. Each of you are integral to the success of our community. You help to enhance the quality of life in our community. And so I am just, you know, people think about should they come to the city of Columbus? Well, you come to the city of Columbus because of the quality of life. And the arts play such a role in that. I want to thank Wendy Kendrick, Antoinette Savage, Queen Brooks, and Janet George, because I know that they have art that is in the building, that they were individuals that took a chance on me when I started my Star Arts Gallery. They allowed me to be able to show their work, so they have blessed me, so I thank them for what they have done, and I'm so happy their work is here. I want to thank the planning committee, and um, I don't know everyone that served on it, but I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank Kathy for your work. I need to thank Carl Williams. You know, he, Carl, everybody knows Carl. Carl worked with me for so long, and I know that, but all the other individuals that certainly have made this event possible today. I also have to thank the administration, all the directors that are here that I worked with, that I have you know, worked with in the past and are here today, that have helped to make me, um, will help me to be successful in the role on city council. I also need to thank some, two of, some of my friends that are here that are close to me, two of my childhood friends. I want to thank Marilyn Crockett. I need to thank Charlita Tavares. I see Florence Harris. These are friends I've known for such a long time. I know I've had other friends here, but these are some friends I've known for a very, very long time. And I have the opportunity to serve and, you know, sit next to, to, to Charlita Tavares, which was a blessing to help me to do my job at city council. And I want to thank my family. And I'll speak more about my family in just a moment few minutes. But I also want to thank each of you who came here today that arranged your schedule to come and be a part of this celebration. When I first pulled up, and we saw, well, I saw these chairs up here. I'm like, whoa, nobody, nobody came. So, but this is going to be interesting. But, uh, um, but, and then look at the room. So thank you, because you could have been any place else and you chose to come here. So I thank you for that. Thank you, Mitch Brown. I'm sorry I didn't say your day when we talked about my members. Thank you for also being here. So I am grateful that for the Priscilla R. Tyson Cultural Arts Center, recognizing my support of arts and service to this community. For me, this is a continuation of our family's legacy. Thank you, Mayor Coleman, for being here. This is really about my mother's legacy. You know, my father died when I was nine months old, and, um, and my mother remarried, and my mother and my stepfather certainly helped me to be the person that I am today, and I'm gonna share that. But prior to all of that, I want to reflect on who my family really is. I'll just start with just my great-great-grandparents, Thomas and Susan Chubb. My great-great-grandfather was one of eight brothers and three sisters, and they founded Chubbtown, Georgia, a colony of free African Americans who were self-sufficient. They provided goods and services to black and white residents in the surrounding area. They were landowners and business leaders and whose offsprings 
happen to be educators, individuals with master's and doctorate degrees, NFL players, entrepreneurs, blue collar workers, proud of blue collar workers, and an elected official. My lineage is strong, and the lineage has come through perseverance and pain, wins and losses, but most of all, they had faith. This honors my family and the people who have loved and cared for me while I have been allowed to serve this city, the city I grew up in. It honors my mother and my dad, who taught me the importance of faith, honesty, integrity, and how important an education is. It also taught us about the importance of a good name, a good name. For those of you who are my age, our parents always said, don't do anything that's going to embarrass our name. And, and you think about that. The only reason my name can be on any building is because of my family, who loved me, taught me what I needed to do. And now I have to just, this building honors my family. It honors my husband, Attorney Rennie Tyson, who is absolutely, besides God is the wind beneath my wings, who is a man of faith, who I love and adore, who always encourages me that I could only do this work because of him. And so I thank you for always being there and supporting me on my journey. Thank you. I thank my siblings. And my siblings are here all but one. And the one that could not be here has been sending me messages all day about why, like, you know. Um, so I, I need to thank my family who've always, my sisters and siblings who have encouraged me. My oldest sister, Yvonne, is here. Thank you for being here. My sister, Fran, who was in Atlanta. My sister, Sherry, who is here with her husband, Cliff. Thank you for being here. And I have to say this publicly, I, I, I think about my sister and my brother-in-law. I think about how they cared for my mother when my mother was dying of cancer. I think about how they took care of her, and I'm so honored that they are here. And then I think about my brother, Lewis. Where, Lewis, who came in from Boston. I'm thankful for him. He's the only boy of the four sisters, and, um, he's, and the baby. But I thank him. He's always been supportive. He is uh, working as a development officer and for Northeastern. So I'm just going to say I have a rich, we have a rich legacy of educated people in my family, and I'm so thankful for that. And I want to thank who's here, my in-laws. My brother-in-law, Anthony, who came here from Indianapolis, is here. He is the president of the, the, the Indianapolis Urban League. And I thank him and his wife for always being there. And then the whole Tyson family. There's a lot of Tysons that I thank them that um, all over the country that will be happy that they know their name is also on a building. And, and, they, all knew, and they all know what that means, that everybody's going to be always on the up and up when our name is on a building. So. Um, but I thank my children, and I want to first of all, who, have, who, are, who are all magnificent and educated. Magnificent. And I'm so proud of each and every one of them. I thank Rennie. Rennie. There's Rennie. I thank Asha. I thank Corey. I thank Alan. And I thank John. Each of our children have been... Um, I don't, you know, you hate to brag about your kids, but I am so proud of each and every one of you, and thank you for being here. I thank my daughters in love. I thank my daughter in love, Javon Hill Tyson, who just got her uh, master's, who just got her master's degree in social work from Ohio, the Ohio State University. Um, 
And I thank my daughter-in-law, Jakira, who could not be with us because we have a daughter, my granddaughter, that's a senior in high school. She needed to be home with her. But I also want to thank my grandchildren. I want to thank my grandchildren, Jahari, Sydney, who is sitting right here, Columbus School for Girls, Sydney. I want to thank, um, I said, Unique, who could not be here. She's in St. Louis with her mom. And then little Harper. So let's look at little, can we Harper? Does Corey have Harper? Harper is such a blessing. She's raising her hand. And this is nothing but black girl magic. Uh, and I will say that Harper was born at one pound, three ounces. And she is a blessing to this family, and it was important for her to be here. So, I, want, I know it's cold, and I want to go in the building, it's too, like you. But I need to say this, this last comment. And there's so many people, man, I'm like, look out here to, to thank, to just want to say thank you to, and just hug you. And, you know, the women from the, who people worked on the Commission on Black Girls, I see you. I see you from, I see, you know, I see, you know, Erica, thank you, Commissioner Erica, thank you. I see the superintendent of Columbus City Schools. I see, I'm just, I see you. I see the uh, representation for the 100 black women of Central Ohio. I see you. So I just, I, I just see so many of you. I see the nonprofit organizations that I've had the opportunity to work with and help to fund. I see you. So I want to see you even more when we go to the building, but I see you. And uh, I see you, Tom Diamond, my friend who helped me from the very first day at council. But I also, when I think about our future, this building, when I think about our future, I think about people coming to tour our wonderful downtown and they come to the Scioto Mile which I also had the opportunity to help fund, sponsor legislation when you see all this beauty that's here. To come, this is a magnificent project. But when I think about the future, young people will come to this area and see a building in downtown Columbus that is named after a seasoned black girl. And this is the first and, I, and I'm just so, so thankful. When, you do, when they do the research, they will see a picture of a girl born in this community of humble beginnings at 366 St. Clair Avenue, which is now in the Clean, King Lincoln Bronzeville District. They will know that she attended Columbus City Schools. She graduated from local colleges. She was then elected by her community and have the opportunity to serve our community in a significant way. I hope this will be an inspiration to all girls, all girls, but especially black girls, that they will be reminded if they can see it, they can achieve it. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for each and every person in this room that has played a significant role in my life um, I, ha I could not have been be being elected. I see my, I see Antoinette and I see Jamie and I, I, see, I see people that supported me. I'm so thankful for you and may God continue to bless each and every one of you and just know that I am truly, truly grateful and I hope that I can continue to be worthy of this celebration today. Thank you and God bless you. This is really quick. To the mayor, the mayor, I need to say this because I talked about girls and women. This mayor has, has more women directors running key departments than any, uh, than any other t in the history of our city. Thank you, mayor, for having all these amazing women on your team. Director. Thank you. She asked, could she say something? I said, this is your day. I'm just here. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't get any glory, but you know, the pandemic taught us one thing, and that is to be very uh, humble with virtual, uh, I would say, uh, legacy and making sure that we're able to really kind of honor someone with a virtual tribute to you. And this is from your pastor. 
and I wanted to make sure we did this as you see in the program we went just a little bit out of order but we want to make sure that we actually show this video and so if you all would queue up the video uh, well I don't know where to start. I certainly want to salute our mayor, members of city council, all elected officials, and members of the Columbus community who have gathered together today to celebrate and honor one of the finest women I've ever known. I often say behind her back that Deacon Priscilla Tyson is not just a member. She's not just a deacon. She's a sister and a friend. And so on this monumental day, I wish so much I could be there, but I'm in the middle of our annual leadership conference. But Deacon, sis, I want you to know, all of us at First Church are so proud of you. You know how much First Lady Jossie the Grands, if Dee Dee were here, even how happy Dee Dee would be. You hold a special spot in our hearts. And today, as your pastor, I honor you, I salute you, I celebrate you, I applaud you. You've walked with dignity, with integrity, in excellence, and you've been a model of servant leadership. Congratulations on this honor. Enjoy the love of all the people around you. We love you, Rennie, the fellas, all of you, you mean the world to us. God bless you. Thank you. What a tribute. You know, this day is really special as it just speaks volumes about the wonderful words that's been shared about your legacy, your name, your family. And we say thank you once again. As you see in our program, as uh, we talked about finances, there's a QR code in there. So we just ask that you visit it sometime. It just pushes the arts right on along. It creates equity for everyone, not just within the arts, but for all of our recreation programs. We provide scholarships for children who can't afford to play. We want to make sure that we're able to do that as we move forward. As this wind is kicking back up, I just want to say thank you to the mayor, um, to so many guests and, and honoree. I tell you, boy, we will see your name every time we come downtown, um, but we will also get a chance to really honor you just without the name being revealed here, but also on the building itself. So we say thank you. We also want to say thank you to the family members. And as you go over to the building, you'll get a chance to see the artists that are on display, not only in the program, but as we have an exhibit of the Earth is us. We ask you to connect with nature and connect with arts. Thank you as we celebrate the honoree Priscilla R. Tyson. Thank you all so much. We'll ask that you convene this program. We'll ask that the honorees get a chance to go over first if you will stand and if someone will walk them over into the Culture Arts Center, her Culture Arts Center, and then we'll ask that the guests follow us over there as there is a small reception over in the Cultural Arts Building. We ask that you all enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you.